Hello chess friends and welcome to Zadov's chess channel and welcome to really one of the sickest games from the candidates tournament in 2020-2021 it was the little game from the last round from the round 10 between Wang Hao against Alexander Grishuk this game I think if the outcome of the game would be different I'm not going to reveal you immediately the outcome of the game but if the outcome would be still something else this game would be written in chess history books maybe like I don't know maybe the Wang Hao immortal or maybe the game of the decade at least because in this game you'll witness really one of the most beautiful queen sacrifices so let's check out now the game here Wang Hao played with the move e4 uh, we have e6 by Sasha Grishuk we have d4 we have d5 and now after move knight to c3 knight to f6 we have the classical variation of the French defense and what to do here I like always this idea uh, this move e5 or you can try this um, this uh, very aggressive approach the burn variation to pin the knight here Wang Hao immediately played the move e5 and we have now a clarification in the center we have this block pawn structure in the center it means i'm repeating myself again but uh, i wanted to tell you about the main strategies of this pawn structures when the pawn structure is like this it's obvious where we're going to attack so from white's perspective we're attacking the king side because the pawns are showing us the direction of the act of the attack from the other uh, side of course black is trying to attack the queen side after the move e5 we have knight to d7 preparing of course to move c5 we have now uh, knight to d uh, knight to e2 very important move i think to get out with your knight because uh, the knight basically stands in the way we want to support our d4 pawn uh, with the potential c3 move so here in the game c5 we have this idea c3 knight to c6 and now f4 uh, as we said white is attacking the king side black is attacking the queen side bishop to e7 knight to f3 uh, standard stuff in the french defense we have now f6 by alexander grishuk it is a natural idea i think to break a little bit this pawn chain that white has built on dark squares the space advantage because it's obvious uh, that white has a dominant position simply built around the square e5 you want to break the position with the move f6 it's a natural idea there are also some other lines but i like simply this aggressive approach of grishuk simply immediately breaking the position of the french defense of the closed french defense setups here after move f6 we have now bishop to e3 by Wang Hao. if you take now mm, uh, it takes f6 it's not so good i think because you're inviting your opponent's knight into the game and also this bishop is finally liberated this bishop uh, has at least some kind of activity because in the french defense many times you'll see that black has the troubles uh, where to go with the light square bishop so after move knight to f6 i think we could find now a new square on the board it's of course this very important square e5 and the problem i think for white in this particular line uh here that you have already advanced both of these pawns on d4 and on f4 you don't have any more pawns in order to maybe kick away a further potential a knight outpost around the square e5 so as i said uh it's not the best of lines uh if you're getting uh broken here with the move f6 from white perspective don't take out the pawn leave the position like this in the continuation of the game castling was played uh, here by grishchuk and we have now g3 by Wang Hao. look at this pawn structure it's really uh, like a pyramid here uh so all of these pawns are on dark squares keeping our center protected and of course you have some development problems here from white's perspective you but also you have all, from black perspective because it's simply a closed game uh, you don't have so many great activities with your minor pieces then uh, when these uh, types of position happen then you should of course search for pawn breakers in the continuation of the game queen to b6 by grishuk it's a natural idea simply uh keeping the pressure around the square d4 but also around the square uh, uh, b2 here so that's why queen to d2 and now c takes d4 play by uh, Alexander Grishu. We have knight from f to d4. Also, knight from e to d4 would be a possibility attacking also, of course, uh, uh, the immediately the, the pawn on e6. And there is now really a wild line uh, after potential f takes e5. Uh, here knight to e6 could be a uh, possibility here for white uh, this cover attack but uh, it seems so that something went wrong here for white or for black but actually it's not such a bad continuation here for black because black would have a counter attack a great counter attack with a potential d4 move then uh, white has to react and then you can escape with your rook uh, here to e8 so you see how uh, suddenly this pawn structure can be messed up uh, so how this position can get opened all of the uh, all of this because of this move move f6 by Alex Alexander Grishuk because he played this very very aggressive approach of this uh, breaking idea breaking the pawn chain that white has built here so after move knight from f to d4 here Alexander Grishuk plays now the move knight to c5 and still you have some worries about this uh, score e4 so that's why in the continuation now Wang Hao simply took we have um, uh, e takes 
uh, f6 now the knight is not there anymore so you cannot recapture the knight it's now uh, simple choice by Wang Hao. There are again, of course, some other lines, but here after e takes f6, we have bishop to f6. You could have taken also with the move g takes f6, but then I think you're weakening a little bit the g file too much. Uh, knight to b3, I think, would be opportunity to simply further uh, pin the knight. So I think uh, black could be in serious trouble, but I think in the long term, a g file attack would be simply great here. Uh, maybe even try somehow to open the position on the g file. Maybe even queenside castling uh, would be an opportunity here for white so that's why here uh after e takes f6 bishop to f6 and now knight to b3 uh, again pinning the knight we have knight to e4 here a great counter attack by grishuk and now queen to d3 queen to c7 and now bishop to g2 knight to d6 played by uh, wang hao uh, if we stop and evaluate the position a little bit now the pawn structure although it is a little bit messed up the pawn structure is asymmetrical uh what we want to do now is not to push so many pawns anymore we want to cement our minor pieces somewhere uh, so here Grishuk is trying to occupy of course the uh, square c4 but maybe also try a different path with this knight maybe something like i don't know knight e7 i'm just maybe suggesting something maybe this is not the best of lines but uh, when i would play this position from black's perspective i would search an improvement of the minor piece improvement of the knight on c6 knight to e7 maybe knight to uh, knight to uh, f5 maybe again with this knight on d6 and maybe even try to occupy again the e4 square from white's perspective i think it's a little bit harder to find some outposts maybe knight to d4 knight to f3 and maybe uh, knight to e5 would be also sort of a path to occupy to cement one square so it's really now a messed up position it's really wild here in the game uh, bishop to f2 played by uh, wang hao we have knight to c4 attacking the uh, b2 pawn so that's why queen to c2 and now comes this idea knight to e7 this knight to e7 is now uh, alexander grishuk's preparation to finally play the move e5 uh, to open the position because wang hao stayed a little bit long uh, with the king in the center and with the move e5 grishuk is also preparing the move bishop to f5 and now after casting we have now uh, reached really uh, the crazy crazy uh, part of the game now the fun really starts it was a static game so far but now grishuk attacks the position with the move e5 we have f takes e5 and now bishop to f5 and okay, what to do here? Uh, you can guess what Wang Hao did here, but uh, the, the best way I think here to proceed is simply to play something like uh, here queen to c1. Uh, it's the uh, engine suggestion here queen to c1 but i think it's a pragmatic idea after bishop takes uh, e5 we could then cement our knight around the square d4 what black has as a problem is of course it's idle the pawn on d5 but i don't like simply the queen's activity still this knight is very very powerful here but i think uh, the blockade uh, idea uh, here for white around the square d4 would be a nice one maybe in long terms trying knight to d2 b3 even kicking away the knight uh, maybe black can solve the and this isolated pawn situation after potential trades of pieces around the square c4 but i think the simple idea the blockade idea around the square d4 would be perfectly perfectly fine here for white but in the game wang hao is not playing bad chess like i am he plays simply e takes f6 it's a great move as i said it wasn't the best suggested maybe line by the engine but here wang hao uh, decides to sacrifice the queen because i think uh, this top grand master sometimes they're playing also a little bit for the audience uh, they want to really uh, get these viewers maybe watch these games uh, because they i'm sure that Wang Hao saw this potential idea of queen to c1 knight to d4 but here it's an aggressive approach we after e takes f6 attacking the knight we have here by grace of course bishop takes c2 there are no better lines and now Wang Hao takes out the knight but the cool part about this attack of course it comes with a direct attack against the rook so here rook uh, to e both played and now Wang Hao goes with the move knight to f4 the problem is now you cannot take knight takes uh, rook takes e7 it's not the possibility because you get the fork on d5 that was the part of great of the great cal uh, tactical calculations by Wang Hao after move knight to f4 here Grishchuk retreats with the move knight to b6 uh, protecting uh, of course his d5 pawn and here um, I think Wang Hao makes an inaccuracy uh, he plays the move knight to d5 a better idea is simply to to play bishop to b6 here bishop to b6 would lead now into further complications here for uh, for alexander they should be because after queen to b6 okay you have your fun you get one tempo but knight to d4 uh, is a possibility because this move comes with a direct attack again against the bishop and still this pawn is hanging on d5 
5 so you um, have if you would have taken for instance this pawn again this idea of the fork knight to d5 would be simply great so here black would be forced to play something like bishop to e4 but now knight to d5 anyway bishop to d5 bishop to d5 and now after potential king to h8 here uh Wang Hao would have the opportunity to uh really protect this very very annoying pawn on d on e7 and now in the continuation maybe Grishu could attack this um uh bishop but you don't have to retreat you can play here a counter attack bishop takes b7 and here rook to f1 again you don't have to retreat i'm not sure if Wang Hao calculated this particular line it's really a wild line it's a top engine line uh here after move queen to, uh, 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 rook to f1 you cannot take of course uh here the bishop because you get rook to f8 and uh, it would be game over so in the continuation black uh, would proceed probably to move g6 and uh, the engine says here it's an equal game for both sides although uh black has uh the queen for two uh, minor pieces but still uh also white has three extra pawns and uh, not that white has only three extra pawns white has also this very very annoying pawn on e7 so uh it's really hard to battle so as said uh here knight takes d5 not the best continuation bishop takes b6 slightly better uh here for Wang Hao, but still it's a dynamic game i like also this uh, this line because it's not so e easy to defend this position after move knight to d5 bishop to d5 king to h8 and now knight to d4 attacking the bishop here uh Grishuk plays also great counter attack queen to d7 he says if you want to take out my bishop i'll take out your also bishop and we'll still continue with a very powerful block and in one particular moment i think then black could take the pawn but here after move um uh, queen to d7 Wang Hao protects simply the bishop with the move c4 in the continuation bishop to g6 here the engine suggests something like bishop to d3 because again it comes with a direct attack and now uh white would be forced to play something like rook to d1 but now i think black could simply uh, play finally bishop to g6 and would solve all of the position problems by simply taking out the, uh, the pawn in the next move so uh this was now as i said slight inaccuracy here by alexander grayshuk in the continuation of the game here Wang Hao played knight to e6 uh here rook from a to e1 uh is also a great opportunity because if you take now uh here rook to e7 uh we can immediately uh play something like rook takes e7 rook takes e7 and i think uh here with some opportunities of knight to e6 uh white could equalize the game then followed with bishop to d4 attacking simply this weakness on g7 okay in the game uh Wang Hao tried the knight to e6 uh protecting the position somehow in the game finally Grishuk managed to grab the pawn and now rook to e1 uh here we have bishop to f7 and the problem now about this move bishop to f7 is it's not the best of moves bishop to f5 slightly better here for Grishuk. the problem is now that the rook is not connected to the pawn and you can guess what Wang Hao does because uh, here Wang Hao was in a rage today here after move bishop to f7 uh, Wang Hao goes all in knight takes g7 a great great tactic again and here Grishuk bishop plays bishop to d5 here maybe rook to e1 again slightly better uh, for for uh, for black because uh, after potential uh bishop takes e1 here you could take maybe but now after rook takes f7 queen to f7 uh, simply after many trades of pieces around the square uh f7 i think uh black has a better better continuation although black um white is a bishop and two pawns for the rook but i think this is a uh, something that black should win this is a better better end game here for black black could uh, find great ways maybe with rook to d8 somehow to cut off first the king's ability to play and then uh, sneak in with this king and try maybe uh, grab one of these pawns and create a pass pawn this would be i think the strategical goal of this particular end game but as we said effort move knight to d7 grace took bishop takes d5 and it leads now into further complication because after queen to e7 here uh Wang Hao found a great counter attack again knight to f5 here after queen to f8 we have now bishop to d4 uh, attacking the king and now after king to g8 here again Wang Hao created a new pass pawn and suddenly uh these two minor pieces are supporting the pawn this is now a great great end game here for white uh if black of course and white are playing this uh, end game correctly it should lead into a draw but here uh Grishuk played h5 here uh Wang Hao simply pushed the pawn on d6 we have king to h7 and now knight to e7 the discovered attack against the queen queen to e8 and now rook to f6 rook to d8 and now bishop to c3 
what white is doing here white is building a fortress what i mean about the fortress the fortress idea in chats is a pragmatic idea when you're maybe down some material but uh, you want to have your pieces glued together what um uh, one how is trying to do if you for instance play a dubious move like a6 let's see this wasn't the continuation of the game but let's see this possible uh continuation after bad move for black after potential a6 so after a6 knight to f5 and that's now a great great fortress uh because uh we have now the pawn is protecting the bishop the bishop is protecting the rook the rook is protecting the pawn the rook is protecting the knight but the knight is also protecting the pawn and now it's really a compact setup uh now what we want to do from white's perspective in order to make a draw just play maybe Maybe some king moves never ever allow uh this uh, pieces to get loose on the board uh, because uh, black cannot also easily attack the position black can maybe uh, create some checks i don't know where but uh, black could probably make some checks but you cannot i think leave uh the protection of the d7 and also of the d8 square with your rook if that happens then you could risk also a promotion idea here of white so that's why here wang hao has said tried a really nice uh fortress idea with the uh with the great great and compact uh, glued together sort of setup of minor pieces here after move bishop to c3 uh great shook simply took uh we have uh rook takes d6 and now after rook takes d6 queen to e7 we have now again a new fortress idea again you see it's a different line but again the pieces are glued together uh here after move rook to d4 king to g6 uh a3 and now after queen to e3 in this position both players agree to draw because it's obvious that uh it, the fortress works here uh no progress uh, black can make with the potential h4 move on what we are doing here from uh on the queen side we're waiting simply this pawn to come we can i think play something like if we manage to maybe play uh a4 a5 then this bishop would of course protect the a5 pawn also the b2 also the rook on d4 and now uh the problem of blacks here is that the king cannot go towards the fourth rank because the rook has cut off a potential king's ability to play so the game ended in the draw great great game i think it was one of the best games uh, from this tournament a great queen sacrifice by wang hao immortal immortal attack you have seen uh there are there were some inaccuracies but of course this is human chess i'm using some engines at home and analyze the game and i'm uh, didn't even know what's going on here on the board but it was a beautiful game uh congratulations to wang hao for his beauty uh, i think uh, he gave us great great pleasure today uh by playing this game also congratulations to alexander Grechuk who defended this position then maybe see also the best lines uh, could have also win this game so it was a brilliant brilliant game by both sides so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot if you want to see more attacking brilliancies like this check out my best chess games of all time series here's the link of this very very important series on my channel i think i have sorted out some great games from the past and um, if you uh, like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and the uh, chess is the best of course